Hello everyone and welcome to Purposely Designed. I pray all is well with you. Um, today, first of all, um, I wanted to talk about reconciliation, which is what I heard yesterday. I made mention of it, but I'm um, just now getting back on one in order to deliver it. And I also have another word after this, so I will be delivering that as well. Um, but let's get into this. This was from, like I said, yesterday. First and foremost, let's pray as, as we do. We go before the Lord first and um, just ask his guidance and his um, understanding on every subject that he brings forth. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for today. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in this hour, Lord God. I ask, the Lord God, that you will open up every eye to see, every ear to hear, and every heart to be receptive, not just only to your will, but, Father, to your ways. Lord God, for your word said that our ways is not your ways and our thoughts aren't our thought, aren't your thoughts. So Lord God, give us the understanding that we need in order to know what you are saying, even through your word, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus and God, we will forever give you the praise, the honor and the glory, Father, because it all belongs to you. Lord God, touch each and every individual that is listening to my voice even now, Lord God. Hallelujah. All those that are going through something in this hour, Lord God, I pray that you will give them power, Lord God, that you will strengthen each and every bone, every muscle, Lord God every heart, every mind, Lord God, every mindset, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, those that are going through um, with even family members, Father, that that um, you will just step into those situations, Lord God, strengthen the families on today in the mighty name of Jesus, strengthen the hearts of the families, strengthen the hearts of your people, even now, Father, for we need you. We need you like never before. People's hearts have grown cold, just as your word said they would. So Father, Lord God, I ask that you will take away the stony hearts of your people, Lord God, and give them a heart of flesh, Lord God. Open up their ears to hear you in this hour in Jesus name. Help them, Lord God, to see what it is that you need for them to see, Lord God, and know, Lord God. Lord God, your word said, trust and know that I am God. Lord, help us to know even the more so that you are our God. And not only are you our God, but Father, you love us. Lord God, you love us so much that you send your only begotten son for us so that we could be free, Lord God, from the letter, Lord God, and so that we can be reconciled back unto you, Father. And so for that, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for what you did on the cross through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for giving the people a heart of repentance. Father, we thank you on today. We thank you, Lord God, for your provision, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for making ways out of no way. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, those that are struggling right now, Lord God, that you will show Show them that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord God, help us to recognize who you are and who you are in us. Because your word said, greater is you that's in us than he that's of the world. Father, we thank you. We thank you for how great you are in us on today. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you're even greater than your son that I did. Even than our flesh and our emotions, our feelings. Father, you are greater. And so, Father, help Help us not to listen to those other things, Lord God, but to hear you in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will forever give you all praise and all glory for it all belongs to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God and amen. I thank God today. I truly thank God today. I, no matter what it looked like, <laughs> you know, I realized that some battles we pick up that don't belong to us and some I'm about to get into to what I'm going to talk about later but I'm just saying I, this is just kind of like a preview you could say you know some if we learn how to master getting out of the way and letting God 
Let go and let God. Letting go and letting God. I mean, I know people say this all the time, but if we could just master it, honestly, getting out of the way and letting God deal with certain situations, certain people, certain obstacles, you know, stop worrying so much about it. I know we are constantly, some of us is constantly in worry. Some of us is constantly in fear. But Lord, I mm, I thank you, Father, that you have yet to, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound of mind. So all those distractions, everything that is trying to pull you away from what thus said the Lord, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, we forever give you praise for what you're going to do in the people's life, even on today. Lord God, renew every mind in the mighty name of Jesus, even their mindset in Jesus name continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness clean our hearts creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us in the mighty name of Jesus God we thank you thank you father for what you're doing thank you God for what you're going to do and thank you father for what you've already done. Because <laughs> it's already been written. So it's already done. We're just you know, going through these motions right now. But we thank you Father. That is already done. We give you praise. And we give you glory. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you. I just thank God on today y'all. Amen. And amen. I thank him. Because he's just so good. You know. I'm sorry. You know, um, if you've never listened, sometimes I just break off into prayer. I'm over here just talking about how good God is. I mean, because he is. He is so, so good. And if we could just hold on to the goodness of God, hold on, you know, just to know he's in control. We don't there's battles that we find ourselves fighting, but we don't have to fight it. The word said vengeance is mine. Saith the Lord, I will recompense. And so get out the way and let go and let God. That's all. Okay. That's all. I'm, I'm, I ain't going to get into that no more because I'm telling you this thing. Um, letting go and knowing what your battle is versus getting in the way of somebody else's is what got dropped in my spirit on today. And so, but I'm going to go ahead. I mean, I should go ahead and just, just go and get into it. But I, I'm, I said, you know, this is about reconciliation. So we're going to do reconciliation, but we're going to come back. Okay. So reconciliation is what I had heard on yesterday. Malachi 4 and 6 says, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I began thinking about how we really don't want to give God his time. We'll go here, there, and spend all day doing other things instead of giving God his quality time. You know, when it comes down to him, we don't have time. A lot of people just don't have time. And um, so many of us only want to give him Sunday or Saturday. If we feel like it, some of us don't even get out of bed to do it, to to even go to Sunday service. Mm -mm. So many of us are so moved by our feelings and our emotions. Look, people don't even have an excuse anymore. You know, there's the television, which people have, you know, kind of like strayed away from that and began to stream 
But then there's YouTube, you know what I'm saying? There, There's Facebook, there's TikTok, there's so many platforms into which you can hear the word of the Lord that it's just like you are of no, no excuse. God, he is speaking in this hour. If we're listening, we'll hear his voice. We will hear him even if it's through someone else. We don't even consider what Christ really did on the cross for our sins and our sakes. We couldn't do it because we are sinful by nature. What he did on that cross, we could not do. Why? Because it would have stunk. (laughs) You know, he was that sweet smelling savior unto God Galatians 5 and 17 says for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would so by nature we got this struggle going on we can't do the things Sometimes, you know, it's like if we don't feed the spirit, we'll be fighting against from our flesh, you know, because the is the flesh. God was looking for, you know, a lamb without spot or blemish. Therefore, prior to Christ, we could never measure up. First Peter 1 and 19 says, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's that's where we truly need to understand, because I said prior to Christ, we can never measure up prior to Christ because Isaiah 64 and 6 says, but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we do all, we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So, you know, even if it might have been Put in someone's heart to do what Christ did because we don't measure up. There's no way. We we just sinful by nature because of our flesh, not because of the spirit. And I thankful because of what Christ did for us on the cross that help us to get in a posture in a place that you know, we are now, you know, things have changed through Christ. Not us, because, you know, we still carry this flesh. But through the spirit, when we get out of our flesh and we take hold of the spirit, there's nothing that that we're not able to do. I'm just going to put it out there. It says how, because when we begin to... uh We, being in Christ, now become one with Christ. John 14 and 20 says, At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. See, there was a change that happened. A a change happened when he did what he did on that cross. It says we think for some reason. God would send us a savior. And that savior would die. And after that we would not need a savior. Some people believe that. The devil is a liar. I don't care how saved you are. Without Christ. Without our great physician. We could never measure up. John 17 and 23 says, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know 
that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So when we become one in him, it said that they may be made perfect in one. Not that that you perfect, but when you come into unity with Christ, with the Father, we get we become perfect in Him. Right? Saint John fifteen and four says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. It's not your fruit that's producing. It's his that's in you producing the fruit. He's the one who gives us the increase, right? It says, this is why he said, be ye holy for I am holy. First Peter 1 and 15 says, but as he have which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. How? Through Christ. I am holy, not according to anything I've done or doing, but according to his word concerning me. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. How? Because of him being in the inside of us. He told us what to be. Not through any means of ourselves, but through Christ we are holy. Because he brought it back to himself, stating, for I am holy. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Which God hath before ordained. That we should walk in them. But now in Christ Jesus. Ye who sometimes were. Far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Only through his holiness we become spotless. Psalms 51 and 7 says, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Ephesians 5 and 27 says that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Lest we take on his flesh. Romans 7 and 18 says, for I know. That in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Galatians 5 and 24 says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore no now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 2. For the law of the spirit of Christ is Christ. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do and that it was weak 
through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be what wait, wait, wait. he said the carnal mind is enmity against God why for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can't be it cannot measure up so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his and if Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Boy, does this scripture break this down. But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. How? By spirit that dwells in you. Not because of you, not because of anything that you've done, but because of his spirit that dwells in you. And if his spirit ain't in you, then what? The word just said, you're none of his. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live he said through the spirit mortify the deeds of your body and by this you will be able to live for as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to teach you and to guide you The word tells us that we are sons of God for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby whereby we cry our father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time. Are not to be compared with the glory. Which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body for we are saved by hope 
but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? You ain't going to hope for something that you already see. But if we hope for what, for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So we have to wait for this thing. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. So when you're speaking in tongues or someone else is speaking in tongues is because the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us. He knows what everybody else don't know. He knows what you need. He knows what you have going on in your life. There's nothing in the same spirit that's in you. If you have the Holy Ghost, it's the same spirit that's in me. And it's the same spirit that's in this person and that person. We, If we're all like mine, we all have the same spirit. If we're, you know, not even that so much one accord with the Holy. Well, yeah. If his, if his spirit is in us, then we are on one accord with him. But we have to be able to listen to the Holy Ghost when he's speaking. You know, um, even when he's making intercession. there Sometimes you could be, you know, in a place and that person, a person gets to pray in tongues. And you may be going through something and. They may make mention of what you're going through. And so um, some don't have the gift to interpret. Some do. Sometimes the Holy Spirit allow you to hear because it's the same spirit, right? But if you're fighting against it, then you may not be able to hear because you don't you some of us. We don't even want to believe that God speak, let alone the Holy Ghost. Okay. Um, hmm. The Holy Spirit is who leads you and guides you into all truth. All right, I'm going to get out of the Holy Spirit. And we know that all things work together for the good, for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purposes not yours not your purposes but his purpose he has a purpose for you and all things work together for the good to you that love God to you who are the called according to God's purposes. His purpose for your life. His purpose. For whom he did know. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover. Whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified. So who's doing all this? The same one that called you. Justified you. And glorified you. What shall we then say to these things if God before us who can be against us if God is for you who else can be against you he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things how who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? 
It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Mm. Not only through the Holy Spirit, but Father, hallelujah, Christ is still at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. So that tells me, Mm. Is him, he's making intercession for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? That is as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Mm. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Not through our own selves, not through even our own will. But a word says through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. See, we have to be able to see through his eyes. Matthew 13 and 15 says, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their their ears are dull of hearing. So we need to hear from his ears. And their eyes have closed. They have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I shall should heal them father open up the ears of the deaf open up the eyes of the blind and open up the heart so that we can have understanding heal us oh God in the mighty name of Jesus. 16 says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear, which ye hear, and have not heard them. So he said, you're not, you're not blind. You can see if, and I, <laughs> if you in him, you can see he's opened up your eyes. If, if you are in him and he is in you, you can see, you can hear. Okay. Mm. Your heart is open and you can understand. St. John 14 and 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. How? Through him. He said, Philip, okay, let's see. Philip and on eight saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it suffice us. See, we God trying to sometimes God be showing us something and we still trying to see what God is trying to show us. We asking him to show us something that he already showing you. He already showed it to you. And sometimes we just blind to the fact of what he's showing. And so I love him because he breaks it on down. He said unto 
Philip, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us, right? Then in, in, in nine, he said, Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you? And ye has not thou, ye has thou not known me, Philip? Wait a minute, you've been with me all this time and you mean to tell me you still don't know who I am? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how says thou then show us the Father? If you saw me, if you saw me, you saw the Father also. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Well, how else? You know, don't that make sense? Him sitting on the right hand of the Father. Now listen to this. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doth the work. So, if we are in Christ and Christ is in us and the Father is in Christ, then the Father is doing the work all this all along. He been he don't not just doing the work in in Christ, but through you too. It's his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. First Corinthians 2 and 10 says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. The Spirit searches all things, even in the depth. The reason why you get this revelation the reason why you'll be able to see is because the spirit digs deep enough to find out and get the answer. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him. So most men, just think about it and listen to him. Look at Steve Harvey. Didn't he come up with a book talking about um, think like a uh Act like a woman and think like a man. He was teaching them women how to think a way the way a man think of why. Because and how? How can he do that? Because he's a man. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. How do God know you? Besides his spirit that dwelleth in you. He knows his spirit that's in you. Know we now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. How will we know freely the things that are given to us of God? But by his spirit. 13 says. Which things also we speak. Not in the words. Of which men's wisdom teacheth. It's a lot of things that people say. And they said it out of carnality. Which is why he says. Not in the words. Which men's wisdom teacheth. Men stroke each other's eagles often. Okay. They will say some things to light a man up and make them excited and convinced. But did God say that? Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual Wow, he just told us that the Holy Ghost compares spiritual things with spiritual. In other words, he know the difference. He knows 
what type of spirit you're holding. If you're walking in the spirit of God or if you're walking in another spirit, he knows. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. It's a lot of things that man sees or says because they believe some of this other stuff is foolishness unto them. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. If you don't have the Holy Spirit to break it down, how can you discern it? Unless you discern it with your carnal mind. That's the only way. I mean, <laughs> carnally. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet himself is judged of no man. It don't matter what they say. They can try to judge you. But at the end of the day, God has the final say. So pay that no, never mind. You ain't judged of no man. <laughs> I know Paul said, I can't even judge my own self. Hello. His mind. We need his mind. First Corinthians 2 and 16 says, For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Philippians 2 and 5 said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. For it is God which worketh in you. See, this is where we go left. Is because we are constantly trying to do things on our own and we fight against God. He said, for it is God which worketh in you, his spirit that's working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. How can we do his good pleasure if we're not being submissive to him, to his will, to his good pleasure. And we're so caught up in our own self. Father, forgive us. Forgive us just as your word says, or we know not what we do. Be struggling, be fighting against you. Not even realizing it because a lot of times because of man's teaching. Because of what people have said. And so it puts some folks on the struggle bus. Because they weren't being taught by the Holy Spirit. But being taught a man. Being taught by man's spirit. Being taught by a carnal mind. 
right? A carnal mind. Do all things without murmurings and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the, are shining through us as lights. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your light, that your light shine even in the midst of darkness. Father, your light shines. Lord, continue to shine your light through us in the mighty name of Jesus. We need his heart. Ezekiel 36 and 26 says, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit. Will I put it within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. Ephesians 4 and 13 says till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 3 and 19 says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Colossians 2 and 9 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ephesians 1 and 23 says, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So we need the full, we need to take on everything. We need to take on his full body. That's why I said, um, take on the full armor of Christ. We need to take on this body, the fullness of him. Ephesians 2 and 1 says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all have had our conversation in time past in the lusts of our flesh, filling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So he's telling you, this is still going on, even as others. If you think about it, just think about it. It's still going on. Feeling the desires of the flesh. We still we still do that, people. Of the mind. Yeah, it's a lot of people. And we're by nature the, the children of wrath. It's a lot of people who are displaying wrath even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love. Wherewith he loved us. God, we thank you. Thank you for your love towards us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. And have risen, risen, raised us. I said risen. Raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. God gave us a living, breathing portal. That portal is Christ Jesus. If we go over to John 10 and 9, it says, I am the door. 
By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. That tells me he is a portal. So, yesterday I had a dream that I had opened the door. Um, Last time I dreamt a door was cracked. This time I had dreamt I was holding on to the knob and going through the door. Christ is the door. And if we take hold, we will find ourselves entering into places we could only imagine. We could only imagine entering into. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, just for reconciling us unto yourself father we thank you for that through christ jesus lord we give you praise and we give you glory for your son thank you lord god for sending him to do something we could never do except through you everything that we're able to do today we can do through him through you that you i thank you lord god that it showed that you not only is the son are we in Christ but but because Christ is in you therefore we are also in him too in you too um lord we thank you for that we thank you for being one lord god in unity with you and your son lord god that we are one in you thank you father that you um have reconciled us back to yourselves lord god and that Um, You are able to increase our understanding even more so of this mystery. How great is this mystery? I thank you, Father, for that. I thank you for what he proclaimed as while he was here that we are in him and he is in us and that he is in you. I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord God, that in your word, he said that we going to make our abode with you. Talking about you and him. Lord, it's in your word. I thank you for it. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your love towards us. I thank you, Lord God, for bringing us into that surrenderance. I thank you, Lord God, for showing us we need you to see. We need you to hear. We need you in order to have the right heart, the right mindset, the right mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that give for giving us the mind of Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for not allowing us to walk to the left or to the right, but to follow you in all of our ways. Lord God, and I thank you, Father, that you direct us, that you lead us, and that you guide us into the way that you would have for us to go. Lord God, that you are the one that is doing the work in us, that we are your workmanship. Oh God, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord God, that through you, hallelujah, we can receive all things through you. Hallelujah. There's no limitations. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we can ask what we will and you are able to do it because we are in your son and your son is in us. And so are you. God, we thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are in him. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord God, for um, giving us a servant's heart, for giving us, uh, uh, causing us to be obedient, Lord God, and not to lack in any area of our lives, Lord God, because you're the ones that's doing the work. Because we trust in you to do what you need to do. You began the work. And you finish it. Lord, and we trust you that you're going to finish it in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Give those that um, may not understand the words that have been coming out of my mouth, understanding, even in your spirit, even when it comes down to speaking in tongues, Lord God, give them understanding. 
oh God, of your tongues, of your word, of your spirit. Lord God, how your spirit dwells with us, how you live in us, how we are the temple. God, we thank you for it. We thank you that you live inside of us. Thank you, Lord God. Help us do your will, your way in this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, draw your people unto yourself. That we become one in you. Help us to get on one accord. In the mighty name of Jesus and God, we forever give you praise. We forever give you the glory and the honor for it all belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God and and amen. Amen and amen. Until next time, God bless.